Bernie Stone. Stay tuned for the Schlesinger Torah dedication on tape with Rabbi Doug. Very good. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. We're going to see Rabbi Doug on your TV tonight. But Daddy, I want to watch Monday Night Football. Forget about Monday Night Football. There's no other thing we're going to watch on Monday but Rabbi Doug. Yeah, Rabbi Doug on TV tonight. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. Oh, how many talk about Doug? Shalom and welcome to Tape with Rabbi Doug. We're here today for the Torah dedication in memory of Haskell Schlesinger and in honor of our own Margot Schlesinger. You remember that they were on our TV show a number of years ago together talking about their experience on Schindler's List. Margot, can you just tell us a little bit, what does this Torah dedication really mean to you inside? Because this is such a special event. Um, I believe that I would never live to see something like this ever again. Uh, and I didn't believe it when I went to Auschwitz. I was in the gas chamber already, but there came a little bit of water dripping out, and we were all wonderful, happy to see and to, to know that we are alive. When I would never believe that my husband would not here be here with me. Of course, age does that to people. We, we don't live forever. But if he would be here and would know that the Torah is going to be in his memory, he would be the happiest person in the world. So I hope and pray, Haskell, you are with me. And I'm with you forever, even though you're not here with me. Very nice. Well, this Torah from Tarno, where he grew up, is very, very special. Right. And uh, this should be an everlasting memory of Torah passing on the door by door from generation to generation. Right. And we're going to start out a congregation, Ezra's Israel. The Torah is going to be completed. We're going to march to the Ida Crown Jewish Academy, which is the new home of the Torah. So stay with us here on Tape with Rabbi Doug as we honor Marco Schlesinger and we honor the memory of. Of Costco Schlesinger today with this Hachnasa Sefer Torah. Thank you. We have Mormor and Harosas, we have Shir Ashirim, we have Kohelet, we have Eitha, we have Esther, we have a dichotomy, and this is life. Taking the good with the man, bad, making a bracha from Klava. This is the story of Costco and Margaret Schlesinger, who saw things that no one should ever see in their lives who saw parents uprooted from them and killed, who saw little ones, Margo was telling me about washing the hair of this little Rachel just before she died and scrubbing her hair. And they saw the story of Schindler's List, they lived Schindler's List. When the children's transport left Plasho, they heard the screams of the mothers calling out for their children. No one should know what they went through. They were not the only ones. But this is the story of our family. And when they, when the war was over and the nightmare was over, they had two choices. They could wallow in self-pity. They could curse God and curse man, and no one would question them. I'll tell you this, I'll be a in No one should ever question a survivor. But these two wonderful people who we love so very much traveled the world to reestablish themselves, to pick up the pieces of a broken life. And they went to France. They started off like there, they came here because they wanted Jewish education for their three wonderful daughters. And they came to Chicago, a few miles away from here, on the lake shore. But it wasn't a penthouse suite on the Gold Coast. It was a little room or two room efficiency apartment. And here Haskell worked day and night to support his family. And Margo was with him every step of the way. And they taught their children and later we who are privileged to marry into their family so many important things about life. From their perspective, they chose life. They didn't give up on God, they didn't give up on the revenge of them, and they didn't give up on man. And they went to work. And they worked hard. And they struggled. And they saw to it that their children received the Torah education at a time when it wasn't very popular and it wasn't very chic. And people told them, what are you going to send your daughters to, uh, to, the, to the army crown, to the academy? You want your daughter to marry a rabbi? 
Worse things have happened. Ellen <laughs> Wiesel tells the story. There's a one of the camps, one of the dark places during the Shabbat. And Jews gathered to celebrate Simcha's coming. Amazing. In the shadow of the crematorium, near the gas chambers, you could look out and touch them. And it was Simcha's coming at night, and the Jews had gathered to celebrate Simcha's coming. What was the problem? What was the problem? There was no sacred tone. There was no sacred tone. So there was an old man. And we saw it says in the camps, old and young, it blended together. It was a very old man. And he saw a little child over here. And he went over to the child and said, Do you the Shema Yisrael? Do you know the Shema? And the little boy said, It can the Shema and Mer. I know more than the Shema Yisrael. And the old man said, Shema Yisrael is enough. Shema Yisrael is enough. He picked the boy up, the little child, like here. And he started dancing with the boy and used the boy as a safe return. And Jews started to sing, Sisu Vesimfu Vesimfas Hope. And they danced around with the boy, the little child, in their arms. And never have Jews celebrated Simchas Torah more poignantly and more passionately. This is a living monument, this Torah. This is not a day to be sad, it's a day of rejoicing. You remember a time when Holocaust, and Rabbi Gillis, I'm sure, knows that there were Holocaust Sefer and Torah were brought over here, and they were in such bad repair, or at least Rabbi Gillis wasn't there, to, to, to make them well, and their display, I have one in my shul in Philadelphia, and many shuls around the country. And they're, they're possible, but they're remnants. We cover them lovingly with a talus, and we have an inscription, this is a Torah that survived the Shoah. And that's fine. But there's a higher level. And the higher level is what we're doing today. Not just putting a sacred Torah in a museum case and saying this is a fossilized relic of the past. We are placing this Torah in a Makam Torah where young people will be inspired and touched and moved by the teachings of our Messiah and our tradition. And we chose the Ivy Crown Jewish Academy. Rabbi Tanky, Rabbi Tanky Stone. We chose Rabbi the Ivy Crown Jewish Academy, as I mentioned to you earlier, because this family is celebrating this year 50 years of association with our school. It was 1957, being with my silver hair, thank God, the oldest of this family, of the, of the second generation. It was Labor Day 1957, I got up on Polk Street Station downtown with my mother of blessed memory. We went out to the Yeshiva on the west side. Um, the Yeshiva had moved already from Douglas. It was at, it was at the Anshay Shul where Rabbi Kegnoff was, was rabbi for a number of years. And the academy was the high school division of the Yeshiva at that time. 3951 West Wilcox, those of you who go back. We're now in the Bayit Shlishi because my wife and her sisters went to the Melrose Center, uh, Torah Center, and now we have the magnificent building on ground. So this, we hope there will not be a need for a bias for me. We'll learn and be inspired in Yerushalayim here on Kodesh. But until then, we have the academy here. And this school will be the depository, it will be the place for the Schlesinger tone. So the boys and girls, those boys and girls mentioned here, and who the 1.5 million, million that died, the youngsters of this generation will have the source of learning Torah and being inspired and transmitting the Messiah yet to another generation. And that's what we're doing with the school, with our school as well. I remember great teachers. Of Rabbi Shlomo Rappaport, your predecessor. I'm going to end now with the words, This Ut Mutzal Me'esh, this brand, this Torah, plucked from the fires of Gehinnom of the Shoah, is now come complete circle. It's over a hundred years. It has lived through, it's a survivor as well as the people. 
It has moved, been through much during the last hundred years. Racha and Klala, good times and bad. Thank God the ending is a wonderful ending. And we say in unison, May Ace Hashem Chayas Azos, Hemiflos Vienu. This is a revolution I'm doing. It is wonderful in our eyes. And we hope that when we gather again in the future and have families smoke out, that this beautiful Sefer Torah will be a part of those. I'd be as I go well. Amen. Hey, dum diddle dum. Oh, hi. You're watching Taped with Rabbi Doug. Just a little bit of background of, uh, about this Torah. 21 years ago, almost 22 years ago, I started rescuing the Sefer Torah. Um, this is actually my 527th Torah that I rescued, fixed, and then rededicated. The first thing is to thank you for finding a new home for a Sefer Torah that really had a rich background and rich history. The Torah started in a, in a town, I think we should call it a city, called Tarnow, which I've been informed was actually the third largest city in Poland. I can be correct. You're right. I'm right. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Now I know it's true. Jews settled in this town even before the 16th century. It was very uh, appropriate because A, the Polish uh, people allowed people to own land. That was one of the first places. Even allowing them to buy ju uh, junior nobility. But more so, Tarnow was the crossroads of many different um, countries, and so it was very appropriate that it would be there. This Torah has been uh, started out more than 150 years ago was used in an Orthodox shul, and it was a rare city where all the Sukhrim in Tarnow were considered to be Yerachemayim, to be God-fearing people, and in Europe that was not an easy thing, we just assumed so, but they were really good Jews in Tarnow. So it's nice to take a Torah which began with good Jews and settled them with also um, such people as well. This Torah was actually found not by me, but by two young Bet Yaakov girls who were about 17 years old, who were on a tour of Eastern Europe. And um, during the tour, they were approached by two monks who asked them whether or not they wanted to see their Judaica collection. Well, I have daughters myself. There's no way in the world they would have agreed to go with two strange monks. But for some reason or other, they said yes. And like every other good tourist, they had digital cameras around their necks. What they found was something unbelievable. 200 Sifri Torah piled up in the basement of the monastery. They went and took pictures for the next five minutes, almost 5,000 pictures altogether. Ran out, fed them into a computer, that's right, went back to technology, and sent them to their uncle and their fathers. They then sent it to me, and uh, my email crashed because it couldn't take so many pictures. We set up a website, and today this is the 17th Torah to come out of that monastery. I hope... Oh. Well, we should be... We should usually say about Abbey of Astrid, in this case it's Messiah. I hope that every time you use this Torah, this Torah is used, each of you realize that not only are you people getting the midst of using this Torah, but you're bringing back a part of these Yiddish and the Shams. Because Tarnow, as you people know, is the first area that the Germans decided to make Jew free. And, um, and unfortunately, they were very, very successful as far as that goes. Very, very few people survived from there. But as my father always says, he who laughs last, laughs best. And the Germans wanted to destroy all of Judaism. I was told by a survivor that um, after Kristallnacht, the German, the German soldier, an officer, went into one of the shuls, took out a Sefer Torah, rolled it out completely, and then offered for a small fee for people to walk up and down the Sefer Torah. It was at that point that they knew that this wasn't just about the Jewish lives, but was about Judaism altogether. I hope by using this Torah, we have the last laugh. Thank you very much.
I have known the Schlesinger family for most of my life, and to imagine that Mr. Schlesinger's Sefer Torah will be in the academy and we will be laning from it every time we need to lane, that he will be part of the lives of our children and part of the lives of Dore Doro to come, makes this day so meaningful and so important. There is, we were joined briefly by a group of boys from the Lubavitch Masifta, so it's appropriate to mention something from the Balatanya. The Balatanya talked about the Sefer Torah representing the Jewish people. And within that Sefer Torah, every single letter is an individual neshama. You take all those neshamas together, you put them all together, and you create that Torah. This Torah was in memory of thousands, of millions of neshamas that we lost. And it is a tribute to the family, to all of the Schlesinger, the, the entire family, the children, the grandchildren and great-grandchildren that the Academy will be able to use. And we thank them very, very much. And we invite you all to join us as we bring this very important Sefer Torah inside with the words of the Seush Arim. Mazel Tov to us all. May we continue to share in such important events in the life of this family. Washington, D.C. suburbs with my husband and my children, who are mostly no longer in Washington. Um, and I knew about Rabbi Euless um, because of uh, the wonderful work that he's done, which especially in the Washington area uh, makes all the newspapers, the Washington Post and the Washingtonian Magazine. And if uh, some of you are, uh, if uh, hopefully you will be interested to read um, on the links on his uh, sevatorah.org website. Uh, which have links to those articles, which talk about very dramatic stories of the kinds of things that he has done. They call him the um, Indiana Jones of Sifre Torah, um, because he has really pursued them by digging up fields uh, and discovering mass graves and um, um, cutting behind walls of um, buildings to find Torahs that were hidden by families and uh, trying to restore them to the original families. Um, Anyhow, I, he also owns a bookstore, which is how I knew him, in the Washington, D.C. area, and um, where I shop frequently. And one day I walked in, and he was working on uh, restoring a sacred Torah, and uh, we got into a conversation, and I said to him, um, do you ever uh, come across Sifre Torah from Tarnov? So he said, uh, funny you should ask, because in fact, the Tarnov Sofrim were known to be wonderful Sofrim, who, um, both in terms of their character and in terms of the quality of the workmanship that they did. And I said that my father had been from Tarnov and uh, that I was certain that our family would be interested if he came across a Torah from Tarnov, uh, that we would be interested in claiming it. Um, and then every time I shopped in the store, I nudged him a little bit. And he promised me that he would, that uh, at some point when he would be able to make a trip to Europe, he would bring back a sacred Torah. So one day I walked in and um, I said, what, what about the Torah? Have you gone to Europe yet? And he said, as a matter of fact, he had, and he had brought back three of Torahs, and uh, that they were at the, that moment being uh, cleaned and fumigated and restored in Baltimore, and that he would bring it to the store so that we could um, look at the, uh, the differences between the different scrolls and uh, make our choice. Um, so I immediately contacted uh, the family, and um, um, I spoke to Auntie Rita, and her first response was, your, this would be a wonderful thing to dedicate in memory of your father because uh, he was like a brother to me. Um, and, um, and my mother, of course, was delighted, and my sisters as well. So um, it became a, a family Torah in memory of my father and in honor of my mother. We're here with the three children of Haskell and Margot Schlesinger. Could you each introduce yourselves for us? And uh, everybody knows Regine, of course, who's a regular Chicagoan, but uh, we want to welcome you all. Tell me, how long 
from the time that this actually became a concept in your minds, uh, did it take to really put together getting a Torah from that was originally from Tarno, where your father grew up, and to today, where we are uh, dedicating the Torah today in his memory and in honor of your mother? I'm going to defer to Sabine because she was in charge of the project. Uh, I don't actually recall. It was probably about a year ago that I started talking to Rabbi Yulis. Uh -huh, very nice, very nice. What do you think, as, and it doesn't matter who answers, but what do you think this means to you in, in, as far as a family? And, uh, of course, as, as you mentioned in, in your speech, uh, uh, so much of your family was lost in the Holocaust, and, and, and your parents lost so much of their family, and they were saved on Schindler's List, as, as I talked about on, on a past TV show when I had them both on my TV show. But what do you think this means as a family to actually have a Torah as an eternal uh, uh, memorial. For me, for me, it means the story of the Jewish people, really, because no matter how much the world has tried to destroy us, we always rise from the ashes. And I'm just so happy that there will be future generations of students here at the academy who will be able to take out this Torah and in some way fulfill the legacy that those children who died and those family members who died were able to. Very, very, very nice. Well, I want to thank you all. You know, what's wonderful in this generational thing is my father taught you guys when you guys went to the academy, and here I am today with you sharing as you're helping future generations learn Torah and use a Torah in their daily davening. I think it's a wonderful thing, and I wish you all just hatzlacha, success. Your mother should have good health. Be hundred and sponsored your to at least 120 years, and you should only know simchas in your family. And thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you very much. this week. Hope you enjoyed the show. Remember, you can check out our website, www.tvrabbi.com, or drop me an email at info at tvrabbi.com. We have a lot more coming next time, so hope to see you next time, right here on Taped with Rabbi Doug. Shalom. Sabra, these are the five, 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 the five,